Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the introduction. So we, um, Ferdinand and me, Michael, uh, very glad that you found your way to this very early session today. <laughs> and um, yes, and we are happy to present uh, our research project, Architecture Research Stage. It's a cooperation between the Technical University and the University of Arts. And science communication is currently undergoing uh, significant changes. Um, the need for researchers to share their output openly, actively networking, collaborate with other researchers uh, on a self-organized level is part of a comprehensive institutional transformation which is still ongoing. Uh, digital technology provide new options here to accommodate a changing knowledge college and uh, can open new connectivity and working modes. Uh, and the architecture research stage um, develop and test such a new infrastructure for the community of architecture research. So I think there are quite, or, or do you have to say, so architecture research, architecture research is faced in this, in this uh, special topic uh, with a considerable challenge in, in a lot of respects. And I want to, to show you very briefly, briefly what, is, what is architecture research? What are the characteristics of architecture research first? So the important, perhaps the most important thing is that in architecture research we have a very unspecific broad research definition. So we have, uh, you can uh, tell it uh, like research about, for, and through architecture. And our research about is um, the typical humanistic research um, about architecture, architecture as a as their object. Um, we have this research for architecture that is uh, all uh, natural science like material sciences or engineering sciences that giving knowledge to architecture. And we have, of course, we have uh, um, research through architecture that is the own, the own research or the own architectural process itself by designing architecture or urbanistic structures, we are researching, we are doing research as well. So and this is a quite different um, type of research by designing, and that makes it very complicated to, to, to talk and to communicate about what is architecture research. So we have a very broad and uh, unspecific research uh, definition. Otherwise, we have a wide range of disciplines. So as I told, um, we have a lot of uh, humanity disciplines. We have natural sciences, uh, engineering sciences, and as well, we have the design, uh, uh, design strategies. And this is typical um, designing uh, types. We have uh, our research output are varying in uh, a lot. So we are not only working with, with text, we're working with images, with plans, with code, models, sketches. We have different states of research output, not only the typical publications in architecture research, uh, we are working with a lot of intermediate research outputs and only, as you can say, with observations. These are uh, our research outputs as well. And we have uh, diverse sources of research. That's the very same. So it's not we are not working with publication and doing publications. No, we are having uh, special observations. We have material collections, uh, climate data, or economic um, balances. So this, this is our input for the architecture research. And we have uh, different areas of research. That is that we have not only the academic area where architecture research uh, take part, but as well in the non-academic uh, area like in the, from the big uh, companies, construction companies, 
as well in museums, uh, in uh, other collaborations and, and networks. So we have a, a very broad uh, characteristics of architecture research and looking to the existing infrastructures we can use at the moment and I want just to, to show it very, in a very simple way, uh, we have these two, th two types. We have open access repositories, as you know, and we have these academic social networks, these private things, you know. And uh, if we take a look, so we have, uh, okay, in the open access repositories, we have the fair data principles. We have uh, open uh, source software. Um, but we don't have uh, profiling functions and we don't have networking functions. And these are two, the two last are, of course, the, the, the points academic social networks have and what's the, the reason why there are so a lot of research uh, inside these academic social networks like ResearchGate or Academia. Um, but the point is, this is not open source software. You can't uh, adjust it to, to your special community needs. And of course, there are no fair data principles. So that's why we think, and the, the most important thing is that they still don't give you a solution about three challenges we have in architecture research. And I uh, want to say it like this. The question is, what kind of concept is needed to discover relations inside a heterogeneous interdisciplinary community like architectural research? So um, the typical bibliographic uh, metadata, um, it's not, uh, uh, it's, uh, we need more than these metadata. And the second question is what technology is needed to make complex and dynamic networks effectively computable? The, Typical relational databases are not uh, effective for this. And the third question is, what presentation is needed to allow a diverse research community to self-examine, paying attention to its typical procedures and diverse modalities? So how do an architect thinks and works? It's important to have an infrastructure that it's possible that he works in this way. And it's, uh, as you can think, it's a typical text-based or list-based uh, um, platform is not very sufficient for, for this, for an image-based working architect, for example. So, so we construct three components of the architectural research stage. We have a semantic contextual contextualization. So with this, it allows describing and rating research context in detail. You can uh, add uh, alternatives and demands as well. So the idea is that we have a much broader um, knowledge about the context of the working. It's possible to have more uh, connections between so different disciplines. We have a second component as a graph-based modeling. So we're working on a, uh, with, with Neo4j um, to, to enable the analysis of this machine-readable graphs. And the third is uh, a kind of variable visualization so that we make to, to make the complex actor network, um, yes, we, we can say operational for the users as well, not only for the machine, but for the users as well. So these are the complexes, and now we'd like to show you uh, an application we, we did in the uh, last year with a cooperation partner, and Ferdinand will say some words of this. Yeah, thank you. Um, we have tested the described ideas in a collaboration, as Micah said, uh, with the Network for Architecture Research. It's a German-based institution that connects researchers in the field of architecture. Um, and we have taken their data uh, that they have on their public website uh, in communication with them and uh, fitted it into our platform. So what we see here is a landing page that we developed for this collaboration, offering various uh, entry points to the data through common elements like search or 
listening, uh, listing publication series published by the network as well as hosted events or uh, a topic cloud uh, of topics that members of the network deal with. And here we already rely on the central element of our platform, which is the actor card. Um, I have to say here again, or explain here again, that an actor, we understand an actor is anything that has an influence or an agency in the research process. So the actor card is the medium that we use to make the modality of whatever actor in the research process immediately accessible. Um, but it also depicts uh, meta information on the actors themselves as well as their research context. So you can see how many incoming and outgoing connections does the actor have on the graph and what types of other actors, for example, topics or tools or persons connect to it. Um, next to the actor card, we also offer, as Michael already described, a variety of other views on the data. Uh, here we see a map of the members of the network and you can go deeper into the data uh, using a list view as well. Um, and these views, um, they can be used alone or they can be used together in compositions to decrease or increase the complexity of the displayed data and also to emphasize certain aspects of the data such as the location of it or the uh, media behind it. Um, and that way, differentiated complex relations can be articulated depending on what you want to see, which is a very common way to work in architecture where a floor plan will tell you a different information than an elevation or a, a photorealistic visualization. So that's what we try to apply here. And different views allow for different accesses to research contexts. Uh, as you know, a graph can be very useful to grasp something in its uh, wholeness. So a graph view of an actor can allow you to quickly grasp the entire context of it, and it allows you to easily move into the deeper layers of context by, by exploring its neighbors. Uh, additionally, we offer sophisticated entry points to the data that are a little bit more advanced. Um, this can be, for example, finding alternatives to uh, certain tools that members have specified throughout the modeling process or uh, finding persons interested in applying a certain method or also um, finding experts in a certain topic. And all of this works because ours uses a uh, graph-based actor ontology with which Michael will explain now. Yes. So, so the idea is to describe your research context. So um, we have, uh, you can use uh, in our ontology 11 types of actors, and as Ferdinand said, uh, not human actors, but uh, also not human actors. So you have the possibility to, to describe the relation between perhaps uh, your research output to, to persons, to organization, which persons you discuss a uh, research output, which organization um, you work for, which topics, um, which task you have to do um, during the research output to, to produce this, which methods and tool you used, as well places you use, you know, especially for us architects, it's important. So if you're doing a lecture in this room, it's quite, a, uh, the output will be different than we do it in a, in a cafe or outside. So you can say, okay, you, you use this place. And um, so you can have, because these places as, as well an agency for, for this output. And then of course, uh, how much time and money, you know, that's uh, quite, quite important as well. So, and uh, the idea is um, that you specify the individual actor relations to describe and evaluate the research context. So you can say, okay, these, uh, for example, here, this research output has application of the method field research, and then you can say, you can rate it. So you can say, okay, this, using this method was useful or not so useful. Uh, it was uh, very time consuming or not so time consuming. Uh, you have as, uh, on your own, you're interested in using the, this method and you're uh, an expert, uh, expert in, the, in this method. And um, as well, 
you can say, okay, I, I, I used uh, uh, this method field research, but I know because I checked it before, uh, an alternative, alternative application would be brainstorming as well. So, and this is uh, knowledge you normally don't, don't find in, in, in an output or in, in typical metadata, but it's quite important because you check it out before and this knowledge is uh, important for, for other researchers as well. So that can, you can use other alternatives and say, okay, that works well as well. So the idea is uh, to, to describe this and to, to uh, evaluate it. And um, if you do this, so you find uh, um, out how research output and the creators share the same research context or to find new collaborations. This is the, the, the idea and the model behind uh, um, the architecture research stage. And you can do this in, in the architecture research stage by uh, using your, your, your profile and uh, on the profile, all your actors are displayed and you can, uh, and the context, you can annotate it by using actor-specific questionnaires. So here we have a, a questionnaire for your researcher profile where you can say, okay, these are my most uh, important topics or my method I used or, or with other persons I work together and um, you can see here we have now here, uh, here we have all, all the 11 actor classes you, you can describe and it's, it's all, uh, so you have uh, special questions there and you can add here, for example, uh, a, new, a new method uh, you applied, you have this uh, agile project management and you can add it and then you see it in the graph as well that it's added uh, simultaneously in, in the graph. And then you can also uh, uh, rate it, uh, evaluate it. And um, of course you can uh, say, okay, I'd like to do another method uh, next time. You can perhaps here uh, VR modeling and you can select from, from a list if this actor is in, in the list, uh, VR modeling, and then it's added to, to your graph as well. And at the end, you can see your own personal profile and that's what we're talking about. You can, um, these uh, contexts can be visualized uh, using multiple views and you can choose and uh, which view you want to have. So it's, it's uh, you can create your own, own dashboard there and the most important thing is that you have now different views um, to the same information but with every different view you see another information. And that's the important thing that we allow us to have multiple views to this information. Yes, so, and uh, Ferdinand will do some lessons learned from the project. Yeah, uh, as an infrastructure project or a digital humanities project, in, a, in the widest sense, we have faced a couple of lessons learned um, throughout the development of it, some of which I just want to briefly outline. Um, we've been working with cooperation partners very, very early, which was sort of a mistake because it uh, made us face a high effort in managing these processes and made us face a high effort to develop the modeling tools before any of our concept really materialized. So the feedback that we got was mostly on what we already had and not on what we wanted, um, which resulted in a lot of the feedback being on things we wanted to do anyway. And um, there was a bit of a pity. Uh, we did data agglomeration with uh, individuals, like um, individual cooperation partners, but also um, the profs within the project, and it was just a way too slow, of, a way too slow way of collecting data, uh, which resulted in the values of the described context modeling or the benefits of it being visible way too late. Uh, and it would have been better, as we did later on, to work with an institution like the Network for, Network for Architecture Research to use their existing more rich data sets to make our platform benefits more visible. Um, our project scope was admittedly just, or is, uh, slightly large for the staffing levels that we have. Um, okay, we faced 
a uh, number of challenges uh, through that. I'm just going to speed up. Uh, the recruitment for the software developer position was difficult. I'm sure many of you know this issue. Um, we lacked connections to computer science and partners from non-academic research. Um, but uh, to name something positive for our project, management and the agile workflow that we used was very fast and efficient, saved us a lot of communication in two week sprints and that would work really well. Uh, quick prospect, uh, since I'm running out of time, uh, what we want to do in the future is emphasize the visual work with the graph um, through two things. One thing is the graphical modeling where we replace the questionnaire workflow that we described previously or offer an alternative um, that is modeling directly on the graph, specifying actors and relationships, um, making the whole process easier to oversee, but also offering more immediate uh, interfaces to extended contexts, for example, the neighbors that are connected to this topic that I'm modeling here um, could be easily fetched and the uh, connectivity multiplier of those modeling processes or modeling actions could be much more visible. And we want to extend this concept uh, on the idea of visual search. I'm going to have to go uh, through this a little bit faster. Um, we can have abstract search patterns uh, realized through graphs. So we can start with an abstract organization, specify it by giving it a name, in this case, the Network for Arch Architecture Research, which is an actor in our database. And then we can add like relations. Uh, so for instance, what we see here is an abstract pattern that describes all organizations that members of the network are affiliated with. Uh, so if you would understand this as a pattern for search, what you get ultimately is a, a list of all the organizations that the network is affiliated with indirectly through its members. And of course, we can add additional rules to that. Um, so we can get very sophisticated search patterns in a very modular and flexible way and uh, that's something we want to work on um, to bring all of the database power and flexibility directly into the front end. And this just being our little prospect. And uh, I think time is pretty much over. So I want to thank you for your attention and we will be, or we want to thank you for your attention and we'll be happily available for your questions in the discussion.